Welcome to Arun Vadahal. Let's begin with the main stories. Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority concludes corruption of 1.47 billion rupees in white body aircraft procurement case, files cases against 32 including former minister Jeevan Bahadur Shai. Political parties ignore formulation of laws in the winter session of the parliament. Government fails to hold discussions on registered bills only to endorsed in two months. 961 billion rupees enters Nepal in remittance in the eight months ending mid of March. Both import and export decline. Deposits increase at banking and financial institutions. And Martyrs Memorial C Division League begins. RC32 Football Academy secure a 1 0 win over Khalibari Youth Club in the inaugural match. The Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority has filed cases against 32, including former Minister for Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation, Jiwan Bahadur Shai, for their alleged involvement in corruption during procurement of white body aircrafts for the Nepal Airlines Corporation. The CIA has claimed corruption of 1.47 billion rupees in the procurement of the two white body aircrafts for the entity. Of those filed cases against by the anti graft body, 24 are Nepali nationals, 6 are foreigners and 2 are procurement companies. With former Tourism Minister Jeevan Bahadur Shai, cases have been filed against former secretaries Shishir Kumar Dhungana and Shankar Adhikari and former managing director of the corporation Sugat Ratna Konsakar. Meanwhile, the list of defendants also includes officiating Joint Secretary of the Ministry of Tourism, Buddhi Sagar Lamitsane, alongside members of the erstwhile Operators Committee, Tekna Tatarya, Nima Nuru Sherpa, Rishiram Pandey, Achyut Raj Pahadi, Jeevan Prakash Shitola, and erstwhile Director, Ramesh Bahadur Shah. Former Minister Shahi is a member of the Karnali Province Assembly and also the former Chief Minister. He was appointed the Minister for Tourism from Nepali Congress during the second Prime Ministerial term of Pushpa Kamal Tahal. According to the CIAA, cases have not been filed against former ministers Jitendra Narayan Dev and Dilnath Giri who were drawn into investigations into the scam because of no evidence. Citing failure in ensuring required awareness in the procurement process, Public Accounts Committee of the Parliament had recommended for actions against erstwhile tourism ministers Jitendra Narayan Dev, Jivan Vadur Shai and Ravindra Adhikari. The committee had also recommended for actions against former secretaries of the ministry Prem Kumar Rai, Shankar Prasad Adhikari and then secretary Krishna Prasad Devkota and head of the procurement department then managing director Sugat Ratna Kansakar. The public accounts committee in its investigation five years ago had concluded that the corporation had suffered a loss of around 4 billion 355 million 500 thousand rupees during the procurement of the two aircrafts. Ministers of the government are to furnish detailed report of their daily works to Prime Minister Pushra Kamal Dahal. At the meeting of the Public Policy and Delegated Legislation Committee under the National Assembly, Prime Minister Pushra Kamal Dahal said that the daily briefings from each minister was decided from the Council of Ministers. At the meeting, Prime Minister Dahal said that border-related disputes with India would be concluded through dialogue. He went on to add that serious talks were held regarding the use of some of India's territory for a full-scale operation of Gautam Buddha Airport with some principal-level agreements that remain to be given a full shape. Prime Minister Dahal also added that efforts were underway for regular international flights from Pokhara Airport. Only two bills have been endorsed in two months of the winter session of the parliament, which is also taken at the session of bills. On the day the session had begun on 5th of February, Prime Minister Pushukamal Dahal had announced that as many bills would be endorsed as possible. Now, with the conclusion of the session approaching near, the government is not likely to put forward more bills. With important bills related to transitional justice, civil service and education yet to be endorsed, the province governments have not been able to perform in an efficient manner. A total of 25 bills are under study at the parliament and the committees. However, delay from the government and the committees mean there are no signs of these bills being endorsed. In the 15 months of the House of Representatives, three bills have been endorsed. Nine bills are under study at the House of Representatives. Of them, preparations are underway to move two bills to committees after concluding principal level discussions. Two bills are under study at the National Assembly, while 14 are being discussed upon at the parliamentary committees. Despite the meetings of the parliament and the committees, the trend of not discussing on the bills has led to the situation where these bills are not likely to be endorsed anytime soon. Four bills are under study at the State Affairs and Good Governance Committee, two at Law Committee, four at Education Committee and one each at Infrastructure Development and International Committee. 
At a time when much of the winter session should have been spent on discussions on the bills, parliamentarians have been spending time in the zero and special hours of the parliament meetings. The government has not been able to hold discussions on the bills registered at the parliament. Parliamentarians of the ruling parties have accepted the delay in formulation of laws because of their other commitments. They have also not been able to apply pressure on the government. Despite being the session of bills, political parties were busy in power equations. Allegations continued at the parliament while the bills were never in the priority of the parties. Main opposition Nepali Congress has also been shying away from its responsibilities while blaming the government. And despite the government claim of endorsing bills related to transitional justice, education, political parties and federal civil service from the ongoing session of the parliament, the current pace does not make it likely. Based on the constitutional requirement of introducing the budget on the 15th of Jate as per the Nepali calendar, the winter session has to be concluded by the end of April. This means the session is likely to conclude without formulating required laws. In our public waste segment, we've asked in all provinces how can the state support the public with treatment in complicated diseases. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. Rogi means like our government, our national government, will take care. Unno will have to pay. 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 Unno कारले राज्य ले एक लाख को छूट देको जब बने कुरा कती जनता समोदो पुगे को बन जाएना सो त्यो त्यो विचार में अपनी कती प्रचार प्रसार गरने हो कि निशुल का सेवा दिन ऊपर ने हो राज्य ले आइले को बीमाला आरु थब व्यवस्थित करने पर सा बरसात निशुल का गर्जे सरकारी गर्जे राम लो बड़ा विशेष कोश को इस्तेमा� राज्य ले तस्ता तस्ता व्यक्ति लाई पहचान करे तीनों लाई फ्री उपचार कर दिनु पड़े। वहाँ लाई सरकार ले सही में पचास परसेंट जति सरकार ले नु पड़े। उम्मीद सीबीरो रु संचालन कर नु पड़े और उपचार में विशेष छूट को व्यवस्था कर नु पड़े। प्रत्येक वड़ा आरु में परीक्षण करने मशीन आरु लैब आरु वही दियो बने अली बिरामी होने भी तीखे मानचे अपनो नजीक को स्थान में सम्मत जान शख्स नहीं तीन हजार लाई उपचार को लाई छोटे कोस बनाए दिन पड़े It is now time for a short break, but for more news, to stay with us. 961 billion rupees has entered Nepal in the eight months ending mid of March, which is 21 percent higher in relative comparison to last year. According to the current macroeconomic and financial situation of Nepal based on eight months data ending mid of March 2023-24 made public by the Nepal Rashtra Bank, the year-on-year -year consumer price inflation moderated to 4.82 percent in comparison to 2000, in fact 70.44 percent a year ago. Imports decreased 2.7 percent, exports decreased 4 percent and trade deficit decreased 2.7 percent. According to the central bank, remittances increased 21 percent in NPR terms and 18.8 percent in US dollars terms. The balance of payments remained at a surplus of 327.55 billion rupees and gross foreign exchange reserves stood at 1,872.82 billion rupees. The government of Nepal's expenditure amounted to 801.58 billion and revenue collection figured 639.05 billion rupees. Deposits at banking and financial institutions increased 7.6% and private sector credit increased 4.2%. On year on year basis, deposits increased 14.6% and private sector credit increased 5.2%. Now, during the review period, the number of Nepali workers, both institutional and individual, taking first-time approval for foreign employment stood at 286,932 and taking approval for renew entry figured at 184,278. In the previous year, such numbers were 351,761 and 192,559 respectively. The investment board has approved 99.18 billion rupees in investments for four projects related to energy. Three of the four projects approved by the board are hydroelectricity, while the other one is of solar energy. 
57th meeting of the board chaired by Prime Minister Pushukamal Tahal issued approval for 166 megawatt capacity Super Thamur hydroelectricity project, 42 megawatt capacity Modi A hydroelectricity project, and 139 megawatt capacity Lower Manang Morshang the hydroelectricity project alongside 250 megawatt Kohalpur and Ward Ganga solar project. The expected investment requirement for completion of these projects stand at 99.18 billion rupees. The solar project and lower Manang or Shangdeep hydroelectricity projects are under foreign investment. The meeting also decided to extend the term of the committee formed for the study of the drafts of Nisgot International Airport and project development and investment until the mid of July. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Before we ask today's question, let us take a look at the result from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we were asked why has the admission campaign at schools not been a success? 57% were for A, limited to formality, 18% were for B, lack of awareness in parents, and 25% were for C, passive local levels. Here is our today's question. Why has the CIAA issued clean jets to a few individuals in the white body procurement case against whom actions were recommended by the Public Accounts Committee? Your options are A. Abuse of authority, B. Inadequate evidence, and C. No involvement. Voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. We have more news coming up, but right now it is time for yet another short break. Sports News. RC32 Football Academy edged past Khalibari Youth Football Club 1-0 in the inaugural match of the Martes Memorial C Division League. In the match played at the Anfa Complex in Sadobato, RC32 scored the solitary goal of the match in the 22nd minute as Bobin Bohra found the back of the net. Both teams failed to convert their penalties after the break. Khalibari custodian Manus Thamang brought down Wilson Giri in the 65th minute, which gifted a penalty to RC32, but Thamang made instant amends as he saved Vivek Santoshi's effort from the spot. Khalibari then had their opportunity from the spot in the 81st minute to equalize as Asis Lawati was fouled. However, Ronald Rai failed to convert, which meant Bobin's goal was enough for RC32 to back the three points. RC32 is the club of national team defender Rohit Chand. The club had failed to earn a promotion to B Division last season because of two points. The C Division faces several, in fact, faced several delays and was initially supposed to be held in Hitoda. Of the 14 teams participating in the tournament, five are outside of the valley. Two teams are to be promoted to B Division, while two are to face relegation. Winners of the league will receive 1 million rupees, with the runners up walking away with 500,000 rupees. That is all for the moment. Up next is the news in Nepali. Thank you for staying with us. Goodbye for now.